bring in CTV's Glenn McGregor, who was listening along uh, from Ottawa. All right, Glenn, clearly the government wants to get ahead of this and also following yeah. the lead of several other nations, including the UK and the US. Yeah, so in, you know, in the past, this government has been accused of not acting quickly enough to close down the borders. When the first outbreak of COVID-19 in Wuhan, China happened, they didn't move right away. Similarly, when there was the Delta variant emerged uh, from India, uh, also criticism that it took a little while to put uh, travel prohibitions uh, in place. Uh, can't say that this time. Uh, they are slamming the door shut to anyone who has been in South Africa or six of the neighboring countries in Southern Africa. They, 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 there haven't been cases detected there in those other countries, but they are, as health officials said at the press conference, casting a wider net in case people cross the border by land and transmitted it that way. Uh, so, but that, of course, only applies to foreign nationals. Canadians will always have in law, the right to return. Mm -hmm. So if a Canadian has visited any of those seven countries, they're going to have a different set of rules. They will still be allowed back into the country, but they are going to have to, as you said, uh, quarantine and get uh, multiple tests upon arrival. And then also at day eight or day 10, we got bearing information there. It uh, wasn't totally clear, uh, but it's, uh, they're moving quickly on this. The question though is, will this stop it from getting into the country? Uh, we don't know. Uh, we don't know how transmittable it is. There's suspicion that it is this variant, uh, Omicron, is more transmittable than Delta even, which was much more transmittable than the original Alpha variant. So that is obviously qu quite worrisome. Uh, there is also concern that this variant has a vaccine escape qualities. That is, uh, the vaccines that people have been getting around the world and here in Canada to such a high level don't work necessarily as well against this variant uh, as it did uh, other ones. That is something that Theresa Tam, the chief public health officer, said we're going to find out more mm -hmm. in the next few days uh, as the vaccine makers test it uh, to see how well uh, their vaccines, their existing vaccines, Pfizer, Moderna, AstraZeneca, do against this variant. Uh, but right now it's an unknown. And, of course, the nightmare scenario here is that uh, the vaccines that everybody's been getting here in Canada aren't effective against this variant, and in which case uh, we're looking at a much, much longer pandemic. Jen. Yeah, and just to reassure people, though, Dr. Tam says they don't know if it's here yet, but even if it is, the tools that we have in place, this is not like the beginning of COVID when Alpha began. Right. Glenn, you know, we have the tools in place. We have vaccines. We, we know masks work. We know social distancing works, but it just highlights the importance of getting a vaccine um, or even a booster shot if you qualify. Yeah, of course. Uh, these We know a lot more about fighting this virus than we did uh, back in the beginning of 2020. Uh, but I think there was, a, you know, a, they didn't specifically say it, but you could get the sense from these officials that they realized that if this variant is traveling around the world, it will come to Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, it, closing the borders uh, to travelers from that region, yeah, that's a really good step. But it's possible it's already here. We've, we're hearing about cases in places like Belgium, in, in Hong Kong, people who got it uh, either uh, through their own travel or but from someone else who traveled. Small number of cases there, just, just, just one or two uh, elsewhere, compared to over 100 that have been identified in South Africa. But uh, we've seen this in the past with other variants. Uh, we know it travels across, you know, the expression... The, 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 vac the virus knows no borders, and, yeah. and that's really the case. Uh, interesting, though, uh, the, tra the transport minister noting that some people have been complaining that the PCR test for foreign travelers is still in place in Canada. It was relaxed for people who traveled outside of the country for fewer than 72 hours, but remains in place for people who s stay out longer and also for all foreign nationals. And he's saying, well, you know, look at this. This shows you this is a good example of why we still have these rigid requirements uh, in place. So government obviously taking kind of a harder line on this than they have in the past, being responsive also to some of the premiers, provincial premiers, who have raised concerns about the lack of action when, when the Indian variant emerged and also the original virus uh, in China, who had complained that the borders should have been closed uh, more quickly. Yeah. We heard today from Doug Ford of Ontario, Jason Kenney in Alberta, uh, both calling on the federal government to act quickly. And, Jen, that's exactly what they've done. Well, and interesting to note, talking about not wanting to politicize it, though, um, Minister Al Gabra did say, look, if, if the opposition is calling for these borders to be closed, they could also ensure that all their MPs are vaccinated. So I thought that was a little bit of a, <laughs> little bit of a dig there. 
Never uh, expect a politician to re resist the chance for a partisan shot uh, in this case. But, you know, it's a fair point. Uh, mm -hmm. you're, you know, you're, you're expressing concern about this. Uh, maybe you should lead by example, Mr. Algabra said, by making sure all your MPs are vaccinated. Now, the Conservatives say that uh, all their MPs have been vaccinated, save for those who have medical exemptions. Those exemptions now, we don't know how many of them are there have been issued are now a point of contention. Uh, the Liberals contend that if it's more than one in such a small population, 119 Conservative MPs, then it's statistically improbable because when you compare it to the rate of the rest of the population, only about between one and five people per 100,000 have been given medical exemptions and they're mm -hmm. saying that's uh, way out of line. Okay. But uh, again, the big question is going to be here, how well do these, vac those, the, these vaccines that uh, all the other MPs have gotten, how well are they going to work against this new variant? Uh, we'll see in coming days and weeks. Yeah, lots more to come. Glenn McGregor, appreciate it as always. Thank you.